Yeah, thanks for coming, everybody. Um, obviously, uh, disappointing to be here, feel that the group had uh, a substantial opportunity uh, to, uh, to continue on uh, this spring and uh, unfortunately did not execute to the level that, uh, that we would all like. Um, and it's another hard lesson for, uh, for all of us and the entire organization. Um, with regards to uh, my own situation, I'll just address it off the top. Um, uh, had a good, long relationship here with, with Brendan and the owners. I'll speak to them in the coming days, uh, but probably more importantly, uh, speak uh, to my wife, Shannon, and our family uh, here in the tonight and, and tomorrow and see where we're at um, as a family um, and how we want to proceed um, with everything. Uh, this has been a, you know, and just in learning the past couple of days, it's been a very taxing year on them. Um, and uh, that's uh, obviously very important to me. So um, we'll go through all that and, and um, we'll all make our decisions and roll from there. But that's, uh, that's that situation. I'll open it up for questions. Kyle, last year you and Brendan sat shoulder to shoulder at this table with a, a sort of a, uni with a you know, unity for the organization to run it back. He's not here. What, if anything, should we read into that uh, today? I, I'm, I'm responsible. So, you know, the decisions made on, on, uh, on trades, on roster, uh, on everything, they're on me. So I, I feel like I should, I should sit and, and take responsibility for them. I don't, uh, I don't need anybody else to be up and shield it with me. It's on me. Kevin, uh, Kyle, putting aside a, for a second uh, your own situation, which matters a great deal towards the future of this organization, but what's your confidence level that the players that have been here for years, the guys we call the core, can actually get this done and, and win a championship in this city together? Um, I think that that was the tone of the conversations with them today, Kevin, were, were very difficult and um, you know, we all collectively need to continue to raise our level, um, uh, players and staff. And I think the one thing that I would say about this spring as I sit here, and obviously there's a lot uh, that will need to be cleared in the coming stretch. I don't know what's going on here. Um, but um, the, uh, well, I know what's going on here, but not just, I've never seen such a, gymnastics amongst the media core before. Anyway, it was impressive. Sorry. Um, I think that, uh, you know, there's a different, you know, in terms of the goal, it remains the same, Kevin, but perhaps the path needs to shift slightly and needs to be adapted slightly and you get in between, you know, persistence and full belief versus being a little too staunch and rigid. And, and I think that's a question that I would take the time for myself um, and reflecting on the year uh, and, and then decide on that uh, heading into the spring towards a draft and free agency. Luke? Kyle, what's your level of belief that Sheldon Keefe is the right coach next year to lead this group? Um, I think in, in what I've seen in, in Sheldon, um, you know, in, in, and I'll just kind of go back to these playoffs, which were disappointing, but I, I felt, Luke, that um, in even going back through the last series, Sheldon and his staff made adjustments which put our group in position to capitalize. I'll just, for example, use, you know, going from game one to two, the major topic was their top, the, at the Bennett line, and the coaching staff did a good job to adjust and address that. Going into game three, if you go back and watch game three, in the first period we had I think it was five odd man rushes based off the coaching staff's adjustments. And then game four and five, you know, we, we played well. It was just, we put ourselves into a really bad hole and it was too little too late. So if there weren't those adjustments happening, um, I would probably be a little bit more down on him. It, it's, there's still, to me, has to be a full evaluation of, of everything. And a full and conclusive answer on that, I think to do so right now would be to Hasty. Yeah. We'll cap questions with those that are standing right now. Chris? 
Hey Kyle, uh, recognizing what you said about there being a family and business aspect to, to your decision with your future, I'm just wondering though, do you still have it in you? Do you want to be here? Do you want to still run the Maple Leaf? Um, what I would say to that is that um, I think it, it requires me to have a full family discussion, Chris, so I, I can't, my family is a, a hugely important part of what I do, so for me to commit to anything without, you know, having a fuller uh, understanding of what this year took on them uh, is probably unfair for me to answer where I'm at. I wish I could give you more, but we haven't been able to have those full discussions yet. But it was a very hard year on them. And uh, thus, it's tough for me to... What I would say is that I'm, I'm not gonna, I, I, I definitely don't have it in me to go anywhere else. So it'll either be here or it'll be taking time to recalibrate, reflect on the seasons here. But you won't see me next week pop up elsewhere. I don't, I can't put them through that after this year. No. Kyle, for you personally, what have the last few weeks been like? We've seen the emotional reactions, of course, to the games and everything that's been going on and getting into it with some fans in Tampa. Just how would you describe your emotions, what this has been like the last few weeks? Uh, well, they're all different. Um, I'm happy to go through them because they're my own foolish, at times, actions. Um, the Tampa one was me defending our fans and Morgan, whether I should or shouldn't. I'll leave that to you all to decide, looking back on it. Um, you know, I thought it was the right thing to do in the moment. I don't know that my language was appropriate for this position, but anyway, it's Morgan Riley, it's our fans. They're passionate, obviously, uh, and I am as well, and um, that was that. Um, I think, you know, throwing the water bottle, I was upset with our play. Um, I didn't know Josh Cloak was running surveillance on our suite and recording everything I was saying on Saturday. Um, but, you know, listen, when I started down this, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an emotional person. I have, and sometimes they show outwardly, and I am deeply passionate about what we do and our people here, the people I work with, the people who work for me. Um, and so when you're in it for years at a time with people and you want them to have success, you're going to be emotional. Uh, that, that's me. I know some people might not like it or care for it, but that's me. And, and I think, you know, I'm, I've always been that way. It's just, so I have to realize that, um, you know, there's more I could see it when it was happening in Tampa. Every single person is taking out their phone, and I'm like, oh, this is it's not going to go all too well. But, uh, you know, it's a different era even than, like, nine years ago when I started, when I was in the Sioux. Everything's being recorded. The, the television, particularly the Canadian broadcasts, seem to really like showing the general managers, especially when they're upset or happy, which if that's what the people want, great. And, um, you know... This is me. I mean, I, I'd like to say I'd be able to, con to not be that way or not be happy or angry when things don't go well, but this is me. Matt. Kyle, when you look back at the degree to which you changed the lineup at the trade deadline, so I think it was six new bodies yeah. going in, yeah. Consumite Trophy winner, multiple Stanley Cup rings from Luke Shen. Do you have any moments now where you kind of wonder, what is left to change? What is left to do to try and get this team to break through? And assuming you do end up back here, what is left? What would you consider adding to this team? Well, I always think, I, I think the minute that you don't have any ambition or the minute that you don't have any ideas in terms of what to change is, that's probably the time where you have to sit and say, um, maybe this is not for me or it's for somebody else. Um, in my situation here, and, and looking at it, I think that I, I liked, I was worried when we, when we brought in so many guys that it was, it was going to be a lot in a short time, and I thought the coaching staff, and, the, and in particular, the, the players that were here did a good job of really integrating those guys quickly, and those players did a great job of integrating themselves quickly, and it was a, it was a good fit, and, 
and they performed well. You know, we, we have a, we're starting to have a group of younger players that are our own that some of them, you know, you know, Nick Robertson, we sent him down to the Mars at the beginning of the year. He had a really good stretch. He got hurt. He'll be back in, term, in time for training camp. Matt Nyes came in, played well during the playoffs. He'll be here. You got Bobby McMahon who, who pushed um, throughout the year and, and played well when he was up and played very well for the Marlies. He got injured in, on Long Island. And so now he's pushing. So I, we're starting to get to that point where you know, whether it's Nimella, Villeneuve, Hervin, and Minton, you know, another first round pick this year, where, where those guys are starting to come along. And that's really where we need to get to. It, I, I, you know, adding the players each year as we need has been important, but we really need our own guys to continue to develop and, and jump in and come along and continue to find good value bets in free agency. Now, we'll have more cap space this year um, than in the past. and, and uh, but we'll have a lot more to address because of the, as you mentioned, the free agents, Matt. Yeah. Rosie? Um, Kyle, uh, one of the first words out of your mouth when you sat down was uh, disappointment. <laughs> and I think you were referring, obviously, to the whole equation. But I was wondering how disappointed you are in the team itself, in the players, their inability to rise to the challenge. And particularly in their second round, they're, yeah. you know, they crumbled. Sure, I, I think, you know, Rosie, when, when you, you can't, before the playoffs, the, one of the things, in, and, and I, I find in this position, you're, you can't, you, the, the pessimistic things that enter into your mind, you can't really, you don't, you're so focused on what's the day ahead, but in this, in, like when I sit here, it's what's going to happen if these different things happen, these different scenarios, and one of the things that I had uh, lurking was, you know, the narrative around the team, which, which I have always, and we've had in these discussions here, have always disliked a lot, was like, well, they, you know, you just need to win a round. Is it a success if you win a round? And I never viewed it as such. I've always viewed it as it's our, we're trying to win four, and we're trying to win the Stanley Cup, and the team, I believe, is capable of that. And, and it's, it's easy to say, well, you know, why don't they do it, which is what you're, the question is, and that's, that's when disappointment happens. So yes, I'm disappointed. Uh, I'm disappointed and the fact that we only scored two goals a game, um, I think for the last seven games in a row. Um, and we have to find a way to um, convert on those chances and we have to find a way to uh, build in different offensive principles that can allow us to produce more at those key moments. Um, you know, I, I think that it's, it's interesting watching the games that there's, I think the Western, I, I don't, this is just my feeling, but in the Western Conference, the scoring seems to be more free flowing. In our games in particular, it seems to have been very tight and close. I don't know whether that bears out across the whole thing or not. Um, but, you know, we're going to be in this division, in this conference for, we're not moving from the East. So we're, we need to find, if, if that's the way it's going to be, we have to find better ways. And, and so, yes, there's disappointment in, in all of it, um, the inability to um, the inability to get past the first round and then be ready to roll come the second, and inability to score throughout and and various different matters. I, I think yeah, that's the best word I would use. Last question, Pierre. Uh, yeah, um, can I go back to the answer you gave to Chris about your future, knowing that you're not in a position today to give us a, a clear answer? But I just want to be precise on this. You're, you're saying that if you you're either going to be Leafs GM again, or you may take time away from the game. Like you don't see yourself taking any news with other organizations. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the, the second question is: You've been steadfast, certainly, over the last few years, that not wanting to move any of your of your top players. You believe that you're the core of this team. Are you open to perhaps trading one of those top players this summer if you continue on as GM? Yeah, I, I would say, Pierre, that I'm. I'm very, the, the answer to this gets construed in very different ways. So the answer that I would give is I'm this spring and summer through to next October, I'm interested in doing anything that we, after a very thorough evaluation, because if you're going to do something like that, it's, you, you got to bet it's got to be very th thoroughly done, which I think the, the team we just played serves as a, a great template for. Um, they won the President's Trophy. They lost in the second round. They were disappointed. They get to the summer and they trade two of their core guys for uh, for a great young player, younger player. 
and um, that's a that's a big move. And and um, but I don't think it was hastily done. It wasn't until I think it was late July, it was a Friday night, late July, um, that they make the move. So the, the way I would answer it is I would consider anything with our group here that would allow us a better chance to win the Stanley Cup. So that I would take nothing off the table at all. And I think everything would have to be considered um, with regards to anything to do with the, with the Leafs.